Hello everybody, this is Grant, Developer Evangelist on the OpenShift team at Red Hat. In this video, I'm going to demo the Mongo Minder application, which I wrote to get more familiar with the Twilio API and MongoDB as a NoSQL database. This application is hosted on OpenShift, and it is using Twilio for all the voice communications and for the telephone number, and it's storing everything inside of the Mongo database that I'm also hosting on OpenShift. The back-end source code, if you're following along with the blog post, is written in PHP. It's using the CodeIgniter framework, the MongoDB client libraries and driver, and the Twilio client libraries. So let's go ahead and make a call out to the application. So I'm going to call my Twilio number, and it will actually make a HTTP request out to my OpenShift server to get the response that Twilio is looking for to provide the voice communication. If it doesn't recognize the caller the first time, it's going to ask the caller for their name, and then it'll remember them from then on out. It'll then give the caller two choices. One is to leave a self-reminder, and the second choice is to leave a reminder for someone else. If I select to leave a self-reminder, I will select the date and the year that I want the application to call me back, and I'll want to select the hour that I want the application to call me back as well as the minute and then I'll leave a message that will play once I answer the phone. So let's go ahead and call the application. My Twilio number for this application if you want to try it out is 1-919-457-1845 and I'll click call. And the audio is going to be a little low here um, just because it is going to be coming through my computer speakers. This must be your first time using this service. Say your name, followed by the pound sign. Grant Shipley. Hello. Grant Shipley. If you would like to leave a self-reminder, press 1. If you would like to leave a reminder, please enter the month, day, and year that you would like to be reminded on. For example, for July 14, 2013, I would enter 0, 7, 1, 4, 1, 3. Please enter the hour and minute to call you in 24-hour format. For example, to call you at 9.30 a.m., I would enter 0, 9, 3, 0. Great. I will call you on September 25th, 2012 at 12.45 p.m. Please say the reminder you would like to set, followed by the pound sign. Hey Grant, this is just a reminder that you need to write the Twilio MongoDB blog that talks about MongoMinder. Thank you. I will remind you to. Hey Grant, this is just a reminder that you need to write the Twilio MongoDB blog that talks about MongoMinder. Goodbye. Okay, so that was basically the, the communication with the application, and all of that was hosted and stored on OpenShift using MongoDB. So let's take a quick look at the database on the back end and I'll show you what the data set actually looks like. So I'm going to open up a terminal window here and actually show you the back end database for the MongoMinder application. In order to do that I'm going to SSH into my OpenShift gear. So the first thing I'm going to run is RHC domain show command and then I'm going to authenticate and this will pull back a list of all the currently running applications that I have deployed on OpenShift. Under the Mongo Twill application, which is what I called mine, under the Git URL, you'll have a username and a host name. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it down here to the bottom, and I'm going to SSH into my gear. So you can see that I'm authenticated to my gear, and now I'm going to run the Mongo command. Then I'm going to use the Mongo Twill database. Now by default, OpenShift creates a database for you based on your application name. It just so happens that I named my application MongoTwill, but if you're following along with the blog post or the GitHub Quick Start project, yours will probably be called MongoMinder. So now I'm looking at the MongoTwill um, database. Let's go ahead and look at the username that was uh, just created. So if I d do a dbusers.find, I want to limit it to 1. And then I'm actually going to sort in reverse order, um, just so we can get the last one that's entered, so you don't see any other user's information here. So I'm going to use the natural uh, keyword here, and I'm going to sort in reverse order. 
we can see that this did return one record. This is actually my Google Voice number um, that we just used to make the call. And here is the recording of my name. I'm going to copy that and put that into my browser over here. And it should play my name. So that's what uh, will identify the users when they call in um, from, from then on. So I also have a couple other collections here. Um, I have a Reminders collection and a Reminders 4 collection. All Reminders actually stored in the Reminders collection. So that's the, uh, the back-end database. Let's go ahead and take a look at the source code now. And to close everything, and I'll just walk you through the application real quick. So the first thing that happens when that phone number is called is on the Twilio website, I actually put in a link to what URL it should call. And that URL is actually the Remind URL um, hosted on OpenShift. And so let's just take a look at what happens here. This is the Code Igniter framework if you're not familiar with it. The first thing it's going to do when it hits the slash remind um, URL is call this index method. I set a name to somebody I don't know. As you'll remember when we first called it said hello or this must be the first time using this service. And so that's how I know that they haven't called in. So by default, I said it's somebody I don't know. I then call the user, this dash user model get user, and I pass in the from, which is actually the phone number for the user. Then I check to see if that user exists. If it does, I get the voice URL that's hosted out on the Twilio um, servers. And then I set that on a data array. If they don't, then I'm going to call a collect name handler, which will actually prompt the user um, for their name. So the next bit of code here I didn't actually show, but if you um, leave a reminder for someone else, once a caller dials in, the first thing I do is get any reminders for that phone number that was left for them, and then I set those as a parameter on the data array as well. And then I load the main menu and pass in the data. So let's look at the main menu view real quick. So the way Twilio works is it's just basic um, XML on what is actually said to the server. So the first thing I do is I set my header uh, content type to text XML, set the XML version, and then I start my XML with a response. And this is what signifies to Twilio that it can start interpreting this XML and parsing it. I then check to see if the from country is not from the US and if it is I reject the call. So why do I do that? Because I um, don't support non-US phone calls to this number right now just because it's uh, cost prohibitive to do so. So I can reject that and Twilio doesn't actually charge me for that. Next thing I do is I want to gather which is an XML element to say I'm going to get some information here. So gather what the user inputs. I'm going to give the user 10 seconds to input data. I'm expecting to get one digit and then when that one digit is entered I'm going to um, call an action which is my main menu handler which I set over here in the remind. So we can see main menu handler equals this config item app DNS handle main menu which basically is a what I've done here is I've made the application portable so no matter what you call your application I look at the environment variable for your applications DNS entry which in this case would be HTTP colon slash slash mongo minder dash my namespace dot rh cloud dot com slash and then I append handle main menu on that for a fully qualified URL. So that's the action. I then say hello and then I'm going to play something and the play tag will just basically convert uh, text to speech and I'm going to play the name which is actually the uh, URL that we pulled from the database, the self-recorded name. And then I'm going to say if the user has any reminders, iterate over those. And I'm going to say you have a reminder from, and I'm going to split the phone number up into a readable format. Because if you pass in, you know, 1-800-555-1212, it's going to interpret that as like the literal number, like one 
100 billion or whatever it is and so I actually split that string up and put a space in between each one to make it um, easy for Twilio to interpret it so it'd be one space eight space zero space zero and so on so I say you have a reminder from read out the phone number and then I say the reminder is and then I play another file which is the reminder that the user left in and again this is just a URL to a audio file and then I delete that reminder add it to an array to delete and then I delete that from MongoDB um, using the CodeIgniter MongoDB library which is very active record like and then I actually give the user the choice here I say if you'd like to leave a self reminder press 1 if you would like to leave a reminder for someone else press 2 and then I end my gather and so when a user presses one of those keys, it's going to call the action that I have defined up here, which is actually the main menu handler. And we'll take a look at that in a second. If it times out, I'm just going to say, sorry, I did not get that, and then redirect them back um, to this page right here, the, the remind PHP. So let's take a look at the handle main menu code real quick. And this is a little bit uh, more simpler here. First thing I'm going to do is get the menu choice so I can say request digits and Twilio passes this in whenever a user inputs digit and I can say if menu choice is one then we want to redirect to get the date because they want to leave a reminder for themselves. If we say if the menu choice is two we want to um, send them down a different flow which will get a reminder for someone else Otherwise, if they entered something besides one or two, a little bit of error checking, I just want to send them back to the remind menu again. And that's what I do there. So let's take a look at get date real quick. And this is a model view controller framework. So um, the only thing I do here is I set my view called collect date. So let me take a look at that real quick. And this is also a little more simpler. I set a response, I gather, I'm going to get six digits on my action. I'm going to call my get date handler that I defined previously. And then I'm going to say, please enter the month, day, and year that you would like to be reminded on. For example, for July 14th, 2013, I would enter 0, 7. So you can see what I'm doing here. I actually, because it's going to convert my text to speech, I actually spelled out 2013. Um, so it would say it appro appropriately. And then for my uh, digits here, I separated them with commas, so each one would be read independently with a slight pause between the two. And then same thing here, I just add a little bit of error condition. If uh, the timeout occurs 10 seconds and they haven't entered anything, then I'll loop them back to the beginning. So let's go to our um, get date handler here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a remind date is equal to the digits. And then I'm going to set that on the session. And then I'm going to redirect the user to get time. And so I want to uh, look at the handle for get time real quick. Um, let me pull that up right here. And this is after the user had uh, entered in everything. What I do is I get the zip code of the caller. So Twilio passes in the zip code of the caller. Um, so I get that from the request. And then I actually make a web services call out to worldweatheronline.com, which has a zip code to time zone uh, converter, believe it or not. Um, and, but they only support the US uh, zip codes for this right now, which is why this is a US only service. If I could find a way to do it for international users, I would certainly add that. So I make a API REST API call out to World Weather Online. I decode that. I then get the UTC offset, and I set that. And then down here, I do a, uh, some data arithmetic to convert the user's local time from the location they're dialing in from to UTC or GMT time on the server. So I uh, create a create a date time from format based on month, day, and year, and then hours and minutes. So this is our, you know, the input that the user entered. And so I just concatenate the two input strings that the user entered. I then calculate my offset. So in case the offset was uh, minus four, I would just multiply that by sixty, and then by sixty again. 
and then I create a GMT date and then I create a date and then I get my new date in UTC time and store that on the server. So date arithmetic is always a little complicated. There may be a better way of doing that, um, but that's how I um, have done it for this sample application. If you know of a better way of calculating the UTC date based off a uh, time and an offset, I would love to uh, get your feedback on that. I then set my reminder information and then I insert that into my Mongo uh, database. And so that's basically the application and some of the source code to explain how it works. Um, again, all this code is on GitHub and I would love to uh, see some enhancements to it. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching this video and hope you enjoyed the blog post.